Hello beautiful souls and welcome back to my channel Soul Journey. My name is Beck and I was asked by one of my followers to talk about reincarnation. Um, it was just that, can you talk more about reincarnation? And I was, okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually visiting with my mother, some family friends, um, and because of the situation, um, there is someone in our life who is um, preparing uh, to leave the 3D and I'm also pregnant. And so I kind of was thinking about, I was like, yeah, maybe this is a good time to talk about my take. Because of course we're in the 3D. Um, any, any experience we have, either we have heard from someone say, yes, that resonates or it's something we've experienced. So of course, this is my take um, after researching, after talking to people and my experience um, with my guides and things like that. So of course, take what resonates, uh, sit with what doesn't, see what triggers you. <laughs> um, and, but this is what I've come to. Um, and, but I'm also open to evolving this perspective um, with more information. I, um, after leaving religion, and being so 100% in it, I don't believe anything uh, more than about 99%. <laughs> um, I don't think it's healthy to be so, this is truth, this is not. And I see it in every um, group, whether it's religious, non-religious, the science community, um, the spiritual community, all of it. There's a lot of, this is right, this is wrong. And really... Uh, people have believed they were right for thousands of years and um, we are always learning, always expanding and there's always something more and really uh, the human eye, ear can only perceive a very small spectrum of light, very small spectrum of sound that we even know other beings on our planet um, have access to and so if we can't even perceive a vast majority of the universe, how can we possibly know <laughs> most anything? Um, but, you know, we try to grasp with our 3D mind um, what we can. And I do feel like in some ways that causes suffering because trying to know is, is such a, in my opinion, a losing battle instead of just being present in the moment. But all of that being said, um, I will share my thoughts, beliefs around incarnation, reincarnation. Um, so to start, obviously, a lot of beings see reincarnation as linear. Um, there's a lot of religions that teach this. Um, you know, if you're good or bad, you reincarnate as different things. Um, there's some belief where it, you start as like the smallest and you work your way up. Um, I believe they think human is like the highest. And I believe humans are somewhere in the soup of things you can get incarnated in, in the universe. So maybe that's just on planet Earth. I'm not sure. Um, there's, yeah, there's the belief that, you know, you get reincarnated. There's something that chooses how you reincarnate depending on who or who you've been in previous lives. So you could be a monkey in one life and then a bird and then a person and then a fish and, you know, all of that. Typically, reincarnation is seen as um, you can reincarnate as the things we see as fairly sentient animals, people, etc., um, but there's this kind of linear path and a lot of those beliefs, if they work for you, good, uh, don't resonate with me. Um, I do believe in reincarnation, but there's a few things that I, I see differently. One is that I believe you can actually incarnate as literally anything. Um, and this stems from um, 
experiences I've had working with different consciousnesses, but also people I know who have, um, you know, done past life um, regression. And I remember there was this one story. Um, I, I was talking to my friend, she did a regression with someone. And this person incarnated as the bubbles coming up out of the ocean. It was a very quick experience, but it was a like a conscious, an expression of consciousness. And her um, being decided to incarnate as that experience um, because it's an important part of the the plant, the planet experience. And that really just made me realize that we have such a limited idea of what life is. Um, and so I believe you can reincarnate as anything. The other thing is that, one of the other things is that I do not believe it has anything to do with um, what you've done in a past life. Now, I mean that as in like punishment reward. I don't believe there's some being out there saying you can be this, you can be that. I believe when we pass, we kind of clear all of our energy and then we go and, and, and review and look at what we experienced. And then from that, we choose kind of the next step of, all right, this is how far my soul has gotten um, or my, my piece of consciousness has gotten from my perspective. Um, from this point, what would serve me best in my next life? Um, we then choose kind of like when you, uh, graduate or you get like a degree or whatever, you then go, okay, where do I want to take my learning next? And sometimes we choose into lives that are uncomfortable or things like that to have the expansion we want. But I don't believe it's because of bad karma. I believe it's, um, we choose, okay, what do I want to do next? And then we take the steps. And I don't believe we are on a prison planet. Um, <laughs> I feel like if you um, are experiencing Earth as a prison planet, there's a certain amount of um, resistance you have to the incarnation you're having. I believe that um, you're not fully letting yourself honor the fact that you chose to be here. If you don't believe you chose to be here, that's of course your own perspective. But um, there's so many people who are like, oh, this is so challenging. I know I'm, this is my last life as a human. Or that you can tell they're like caught up in that. And I just kind of look at them and I'm like, you're coming back. Because um, frankly, if you're not fully in, like present with this incarnation, you're going to ascend after you pass and go, oh, oh, I didn't quite realize the, the purpose of being there which is to have a creative experience, which is, in my opinion, to come here and appreciate the physical, appreciate the slowness of it, the, the juiciness, the physicalness of the creation process of m manipulating energy, as Dolores Cannon would say, um, and to really engage in this moment and um, slow down and experience the range of emotion, the range of feeling, um, being able to eat and experience to make love if you're not fully engaging in the delicious gift that that is um in my opinion you're missing the point on some level um and that comes in many forms we can choose how we feel about any given situation we can see the divinity and the perfection in it or we can see the discomfort in it and there's a really cool uh free will choice in that as well um so there's that. And another thing that most people would say, oh, my soul had this linear, I have past lives. Um, and I think a lot of us have kind of moved away from this on some level. Like we kind of know that's not really quite how it works, but a lot of people still see it very much like that. Um, but that time and space is a 3D concept, okay? Um, I believe any life is um, alternate lives right now here in this moment. Um, and 
so we tap in to we can tap into any of them because they're happening simultaneously and then if you take it up another level from that um you know because people go well that was my past life that was my past life that wasn't um it's still kind of in this separateness mentality whereas if you believe we're one consciousness aren't all alternate lives your alternate lives um I've heard people talk about that you don't really have specific past lives to you, but rather in this life, you tap into alternate versions of yourself, you know, of consciousness that will assist you in moving forward in this life. The ones that are vibrational match, the ones that resonate. And so you tap into alternate lives that you are experiencing that line up so you can go, oh, there's that lesson, there's the synchronicity, there's the, you know, there's the pattern there. Oh, okay, I see it. There's a lesson there. And that you tap into whatever life serves you uh, to tap into. That it's not really about you having a sequence of lives. That's just been something I have heard people talk about. And I, I, I resonate with that because if we're one consciousness, then yes, every incarnation is you, which is quite beautiful. I just saw 444 um, and 222 before. Um, so there's that. And, and, you know, and this broad idea of, like I was saying, like, I don't believe we're on a prison planet. I don't believe that we're trapped here. Like our consciousness is trapped here. You could incarnate into any reality, any dimension, any race of being, plant, crystal, um, animal, extraterrestrial. Um, and then, you know, there's also the level of that our soul streams can come together and incarnate into one being. A lot of people believe, for instance, the Christ consciousness, Jesus Christ consciousness was actually a collective. There's a lot of um, gurus and um, spiritual beings who a lot of people would say were a bunch of beings incarnated almost as like a council. Um, and then after they passed, those beings re-separated or would go into two different directions or whatever, um, depending on the collective contract. Um, I see consciousness as a stream, not as this like ball of, you know, this soul is not, not as a ball of light, but that we are a collective stream of consciousness and so there is one river and we're all moving and the rivulets go out and they can split off into rivulets and, and come back in and, and you know do whatever um and in your soul family the ones that feel familiar might be closer on that soul stream so there's all these this this flowing of consciousness and i really appreciate that perspective because it's this you have a stream of consciousness coming through you. And that's why you can channel. You can channel other streams of consciousness. And when you're in resistance, you kind of close that off a little bit. And that's why you don't feel as good. You feel like less of yourself. Um, and so when we get wounded, I don't believe that we are broken. I don't believe that we are uh, missing pieces of us. I believe that we, from protection mechanisms, from belief systems slow that stream down almost like um you know turning off a faucet and so we we are not at full capacity we're not at full charge but through healing and awareness and expansion and releasing that resistance that stream that that flow can re-energize our being um and we can have the full experience of being fully in tune with our higher aspects which of course you know we call ourselves multi-dimensional beings this is our 3D aspect, but then like our higher self is in a, a different part of us. It is another layer of us. Um, if we could get our eyes to see the higher um, dimensions and perceive that our higher being is just a, a wider version of us. Just like we say our aura is a part of us and it's just, it's, it is all us. And if we really went broad, it would just be, everything would be all of us. Um, it's just about the level of consciousness that you are perceiving at the time. Um, and so we are just consciousness in layers. Um, and so I look at this, this bush outside and I say, 
it is made up by the same consciousness as I am. And I do believe it's having a conscious experience. We, we so easily dis, you know, dismiss an experience of another being because we don't, we are like, well, how does it see? How does it hear? How does it talk, eat, whatever? Um, notice we validate the beings that look more like us. So, you know, dogs are, and monkeys um, are more valid beings who is like, oh, I can see that. But, you know, a tree, yeah, cut it down for a house. We don't see that it might have just as much consciousness, but might have completely different receptors for perceiving, um, you know, or or a rock or a tree. We We have such a limited perspective on what is an aspect of consciousness. Um, and that's why I believe when we make up what does an extraterrestrial look like, oh, we'd know, we'd know, we'd have these big eyes and it would look, it would look like us, um, just slightly evolved. And I say, what if we have no idea? You know, we, we look at other planets and go, well, a be beings can't live there because it doesn't have water and oxygen. I'm like... <laughs> What a limited perspective that a being would need all those things. It could be they're literally so vivid and our eyes just can't perceive it. Like, you know, there could be cities on all these planets. I do believe there's a lot of beings on these other planets around us. And we literally just don't see or validate that expression of consciousness. Like extraterrestrials could rock up and just be balls of light. They don't need water, they don't need air, but they could be vastly expansive and, and conscious. And I think being caught up in this, I reincarnate, I'm on this, you know, this kind of grind of this soul journey does limit the now because it's still looking backwards it's still looking forwards it's still not quite being present with the here of this incarnation oftentimes and i it's not always most beings who are interested in past lives or even future lives, or being a star seed, are really trying to escape this incarnation. I saw a video, the, the, the person in the video was saying, oh, I hate this life. Because I just had a past life regression and I lived in, in Egypt and I lived in Atlantis and I lived in this and look how beautiful they were. And I'm just a normal person in this life. And I said, you don't get it. <laughs> We deal with food and we deal with having to go to the store and making money. And it's always been like that. There's always contrast in all the different lives and we've romanticized them. And so when we say, oh, I was a, a priestess in Egypt. And if, if you let your ego clamp around that, it, it's often because it feels cooler than what you're dealing with right now. There's this. I don't like what's going on, so I'm gonna focus on, well, I'm really this. I was really that. I was important. Um, and we romanticize this idea of past and future lives. I just wanna get off this planet. I just wanna go back to my home planet. Well, if you were meant to be on your home planet, your home planet, what does that even mean? We're all one consciousness, we're, everything's home. <laughs> we are the home. If you were meant to be in that incarnation, you would be there, but you're here. And there's a sacredness in just surrendering into the this. There's a reason your consciousness is focused here. And if you're not owning it, you, you're probably missing the point or the majority of why you're even incarnated here. And you're gonna go back and join the collective afterward and you're gonna go oh right right I missed it and you'll come right back into a life just like it because from that higher level that broad not higher but broader perspective 
you go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's, there's so much more to it. And you'll still want to learn that lesson. You'll still want to have that expansion. And so you'll get, you'll, re, you'll be reborn. You know, I, I've heard from many people that when they work with a being that then unalives themselves, they often reincarnate almost immediately right back into a situation that is going to take them on a similar path because as soon as they rejoin, they go, oh God, <laughs> right? That's why I was doing that. That's why there was that contrast. And then they, they choose to do it again because it is not a punishment. It's just because from that broader perspective, they get it again and they go, all right, I, there was a reason I was here and I want to, I still want to do that. You know, I, I, you know, um, and I just find that very interesting. So, um, yeah. So I think I've kind of covered my perspective on reincarnation. I don't even like calling it reincarnation. I, 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 you know, I, I really consider it alternate expressions of consciousness that will at some point have my focus on it. Um, and from that perspective, you not only really start appreciating your own experience, even the very simple experiences like taking a shower or breathing or eating, but then you also start really honoring the sacredness of literally everything else around you. And when you really come at it from that place, it just is a very different experience. And... I definitely am not in that all the time, not even a little bit. I'm still working on it. But I believe the beings that are truly enlightened, if that's really a thing, are the beings who can hold on to that awareness consistently. Um, and, and they bliss, you know, when you're in that awareness, you're just blissed out. You're, and you're in the surrender and non-resistance. And when you're in non-resistance, you manifest things so easily because there the, again that flow is so potent you can tune into any aspect of consciousness all the alternate options and so i believe that to be truly enlightened is to truly understand the sacredness that we really are one we throw that around i we're one with everything but really, when you, like, what does that mean? Like, think about what that really means. And when you really embody that awareness and perception, it's hard not to be just really peaceful and blissed out, no matter where you are. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think that kind of sums it up. Uh, comment down below. If this resonated with you and if you'd like more videos like this in the future um and if you'd like any if you have any other topics you'd like me to uh give my perspective on <laughs> um i i have a limited perspective just like everyone else um but if you are interested in mine let me know <laughs> anyway blessings beautiful beings um if you'd like to check out any of my other content or social media platforms the descriptions are down below i do a lot of different kinds of content on all my different platforms so um you get a lot of different things in in different spaces and um if you'd like to check out my etsy shop get a reading with me or channeling or any of my crystal jewelry uh my etsy shop is down below as well so thank you so much for your question um thank you so much for watching um thank you for being here and being a part of the learning, growing, expanding experience that is all of us. Um, many blessings. Namaste. And don't forget, it's all about the soul journey. Or the soul be. It's about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> blessings.